Remember when all cameras used to be great big ugly boxes like that and you had to buy several to set them up to point different directions? And you got static cameras screwed to the sides of buildings and then private residents start putting them up everywhere. It seems everywhere you look, something is looking back at you. That is just sheer paranoia. Some cameras are small so that they can see you, but you can't see them. And some cameras are there to make a statement. Some cameras are hidden so you can't see them. Oh no, that's not a camera. The cameras are getting smaller and smaller all the time. This one's even got a little window washer on it. But with this type, the huge box underneath is a transmitter. I don't know if it's a microwave one or infrared. And that will transmit the information across town to another receiver. And there's the transmitter receiver on the bottom of it. There's one of the tiny ones with the infrared LEDs in it. I think we should have a good look inside one of these pan tilt zoom cameras. I think that's a 17 mil. So there's our toy for the day to have a look inside. The pan tilt zoom camera. Uh, super duper thing. Screwdriver's no good. Looks like it's Allen keys so I'll just find some Allen keys and we'll get this open. So we've taken off all the casing, uh, the Perspex dome, the metal work. Uh, there's a multi-way plug so the whole lot can just drop into place so it's easy to assemble when you're up a ladder. There's, uh, get into the camera here. There's the camera. Very nice. I think this is 27 times optical zoom or 32 times, but we'll have a look at the numbers on the internet and see if we can find out exactly what it is. I think there's a Sony chip under there. Uh, some of these cameras will only do 350 degrees, stop, and then you have to whiz back to carry on so it doesn't tangle its cables up. But this will do a full 360. Now, this is 24 volts AC, so I haven't got power on demand, 24 volts AC, but I have got a toroid here, toroidal transformer, and I reckon it's got two 12s on the secondary. I reckon we'll be able to knock something up with that and get this thing actually powered up. I just noticed, I thought there were tea bags at first, obviously not. There's a couple of little baskets in here and these have got silica gel in and that's to stop moisture building up on the inside. Some of the cameras have a fan and a heating system, you know, a huge uh, 5 ohm resistor or whatever, just to keep it warm inside. But uh, yeah, this has just got the silica gel tea bags. Anyway, stop nattering. I'm going to get this transformer set up so we can put this thing in motion. I've set up the toroidal transformer, uh, 24 volts AC, and wired it into this multi-way plug. It's a very flexible plug, this is. I think it's designed to be uh, not solid and movable, so that will go in there. And it's quite top heavy this and difficult to hold, but let's power it up. And you'll see it'll do two or three turns. Uh, there's a little sensor down there with a magnet on the end that tells it uh, where zero is in the X position or is it Y. And then the X or Y, whatever the camera's doing. And now it's going to go to a pre-programmed position. I think we should get this running into a monitor and a controller. This runs on RS-485 uh, signal and uh, yeah, let's see what we can control with it. It's got 24 volts AC now. Uh, I've set it up to a standard monitor with a composite video and just run it. It's waiting with two T's. Waititing. That's Chingalese. Information comes up. 
Dome ID 001, Pelco D, board rate 2400. This information has been generated by the camera. So we'll know what to set our controller up to to talk to this specific camera. Right, now I've got to go and find a controller. Right, I've set up the controller to the camera. Uh, you have to use an ID. So that sends a little bit of information to the camera to say, you're the camera I want to operate with this stream of data information. Uh, all the up, down, left, right works, the zoom in and out, etc. Now then, that's a packet of batteries. And that uh, packet of batteries is four meters away. That's been loaded into the memory as to where that battery is. So if you had this up in a security situation, you could have an area over there which is a doorway and another area which is windows and anyway you just add all these different presets in so I've just loaded a few presets in just to play about with this another pack of batteries a clock on the wall over there and back to the drill cells over there and now I'll zoom out so that's four meters away and you can still read what's on the pack. All that information of where these uh, different presets are, are stored, it's, it's inside the camera. It's not inside this box. Uh, this has a, a memory of all these different positions, presets and tours, and it'll do specific tours and things and scans between area one and area two at specific speeds. All that is programmed into the camera each individual camera so sometimes when you walk past these and you see them suddenly move backwards and forwards it doesn't mean there's actually an operator on the other side following you or, or turning the you know the joystick around and following where you're going it's the camera running on a timer and it'll look over there for two minutes look up the road there for two minutes uh, look back at a, a bank or a shop for a couple of minutes and the camera's just doing this tour round and round 24 hours a day but at any time an operator can just touch the joystick and he's in control again I've hung this thing the right way up now with the help of a tripod and some cable ties so up down left and right is correct now according to the joystick now just over my shoulder there zoom in this shows you just how pretty good these cameras are. I mean, this is going through my glass and then up the road. I mean, it's a dirty window, it needs washing. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, get it back to me again. Where's me? That's it, that's better. Right, now, I don't know how to get rid of this masking here. I haven't got a clue. It's in the camera, it's digitally placed in the memory somewhere, but I'm sure there's some way to hack into it and remove all these masks, these black masks or whatever they're called, I don't know. But I think we should have a look at the actual electronics in this because it's really nicely made. Every time the camera powers up, it'll do a couple of tests to try and verify its position. Here is a transmit receive infrared device and you'll see a small blade goes up and sits in between. When it reaches that point it knows exactly where that camera is pointing. The same can be said up here although that's a magnetic device and that's passing a little magnet that's on the base plate. It'll go past that twice and verify where zero is in its 360 degree field. Okay, now we're going to take this thing to pieces. Underneath the connector here, there is actually a small fan. And there's the heating element. That's just to warm the thing up when it's obviously icy cold. So we'll get all this out of the way. Remove these plugs here. And this reveals the power supply. Ouch. 
So on this first top board, we've got the fan. The fan blows across the heater and blows the warm air down into the camera system. On the back, there's a couple of uh, thermal switches. They're definitely thermal switches, I'm sure. There's a relay here, which operates the heater. And on this side, what have we got? Some PC817 sharp optocouplers, these are. Another optocoupler there. These look like spark gaps. Hmm. I don't know if I'm right about that. Uh, there's some uh, little fuses on surface mount there. There's uh, an STQ chip, or STC, sorry. I can barely read that. There's still a bit of sticky left on top of it. I'm not too sure what that one is. There is a 74HC14D, that's a hex inverting Schmidt trigger. There's a 6LB184, that's a differential transceiver. But, yeah, a few more components, but nothing terribly exciting. Right, let's get on to the next layer. The next layer. On the power board, there's your 24 volts input there. And here's your 5 volts and 12 volts output this side. There's a power MOSFET here on a heatsink. A little transformer hidden underneath there. Uh, Cheng is the brand name of the capacitors. They're at 105 Celsius. Uh, there's a fuse there. There's a couple more optocouplers here. 5 volt regulator. And this here is a current mode switching controller. There you go, nice little board. Not a lot on the back. Okay, let's go down another level. So, on this piece, this is where the stepper motors live. Uh, two stepper motors. This piece is normally static, and this whole unit turns around. The wires that go through here won't tangle up. Uh, there's a special little device down there that's got little connectors running along a rod, and that helps this to go round and round with no cables to twist. On the board here you've got a couple of uh, stepper motor drivers for the two stepper motors. Uh, that's an 8-bit digital to analog converter and there's a couple of SST chips, silicon storage technology. I don't know exactly what they're doing, obviously they're microcontrollers, they're controlling. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to get this board off now. On the reverse of this board, uh, there's a little Atmel 24C256, that's a two wire serial EEPROM, uh, and nothing else too exciting. And there's a bit of unpopulated area for Max 232 and the few components. Uh, maybe that's for another range, another model that they build, not sure. Here's the little device that allows the cabling to go round and round and never get tangled up. Here's the cradle that holds the camera and it looks like it can take several different cameras because it's got lots of little screws with one, two and three etc on there and the circuit board on the back says for Sony and Hitachi cameras so it'll take either. But here is the main camera and this I guess is a Sony. I've just taken a few screws out so you're not sitting watching me unscrewing everything. And it it kind of just peels apart. There's a huge processor here. Uh, some Sony chips there. CDX1465Rs. Yep. You can find out what that is on the internet later. Uh, several little plugs and things in the sides. Some of them are only accessible when you take the flaps off. So maybe that's for setting it up and programming it from the factory. There's a little module sat on top of that board there. Don't know what that's doing. The camera lens system comes all the way down to the back here and there's your image sensor there, on a little board there. 
these are the motors for zoom, focus, uh, this would be for the iris control. There's a couple of push buttons here, one for telephoto, one for wide. A bit of manual control there. I still can't find out any information whether this is a 27 times zoom or 32 times zoom or whatever. But the board says VC405, a couple of other digits, but nothing to give me a specific model number. And now we'll try and put it all back together. Right, just as I'm putting this back together, I don't know if I mentioned this set of dip switches here. This is so you can set the address of the camera. This is set to number one. Uh, this is for Pelco D, Pelco P, Hitachi, all sorts of different communications. Uh, and then you'll have the board rate settings here. Everything is all back together again now, I think. And now it's just the final test to see if it all runs. Yes. Wait to ting with two T's. Well, I think that confirms that it works. Okay, I've got a load of screws left over, but most of those fit into the casing and all the armour. But there you go, it works. Thanks for watching and I'll find something else to take apart soon.